and welcome to the Electric Typewriter. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of my favorite free design resources. First, let's talk about fonts. One of the best websites out there for free fonts is Font Squirrel. And not only is this a website for free fonts, but this is also a site that you can use for commercial use as well. Today, I'm going to show you how to find fonts and also install them on your computer, and you'll be surprised at how easy it actually is. On the home page here, we can see some of the featured fonts, and there's quite a variety, anything from a basic font to script, and you can also see different classifications and tags on the right-hand side. One of my favorite type of fonts is the hand-drawn look, and that's really popular right now. So let's see if we can find a font that we might want to download. How about this one? All right, when you first come in, you can see the alphabet of the font, and it'll also break it down into some different sizes, and you can also see the different weights. If you click on the test drive, this is a pretty neat feature, because you'll actually be able to try the font out with perhaps some of the text you're gonna use for your project. So as you can see here, I can preview the font and also change the size. So I'm gonna try doing the largest size just to get an idea, and maybe the smallest size. Once I found the font that I want, I'm going to hit the download OTF button and that's going to download right to my downloads folder. Simply open up your downloads folder and this is the same on a PC or a Mac and double click on the font name. You'll hit the install button and just like that we have a font. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have a program like Word or Photoshop open, you'll want to make sure that you close the program and reopen. Next, let's talk about photos. Photos can sometimes be the most important part of our project and yet the most difficult thing to find. The site that I'm going to show you today is called Flickr, and it's a community of amateur and professional photographers. These photos, as long as we give credit to the author, we'll be able to use, and they're really quite stunning. Let's get started. All right, up at the top of the screen, you'll notice that there's a search bar and we can come up here and type in pretty much anything that we'd like. I'm gonna type in a typewriter and don't be too excited about these results quite yet. We need to drill down one level to permission with Creative Commons over here on the left-hand side. But as you can see, the results are still pretty stunning. So any of these photos I'm gonna be able to use for my project and I'll click on one. How about this one? And over in the right hand corner, there's a download button. And you'll see that there's multiple options in terms of the file size. Remember, you can always make a picture smaller, but you can't make it larger. So I do recommend downloading at least the medium quality, if not the large option. All right, the last resource we're gonna take a look at is called The Noun Project. This is a really awesome repository of icons with similar use case as the Flickr site, just a Creative Commons license, you just need to give credit, though you can purchase the icon if you'd like. And icons are really great because you can make them as small or as large as you'd like to. So you can use them for anything from maybe a business card all the way up to a large infographic. Here you'll see there's a search bar in the middle of the page, and the key here is to be a little less specific. So if I'm looking for something for Barcelona, perhaps, I want to maybe drill back one and type in Spain. All right, we have a nice selection of icons to choose from. Let's see if we can find one for our project. How about this one? This might be great for a poster about countries around the world. I'll click on download, and there's two options here. PNG and SVG. The major difference is a PNG file is a nice optimized size. It's going to be perfect for using in a Word document, but I won't be able to customize the icon very much. I won't be able to change the color. An SVG, on the other hand, is something that I can put into maybe an Adobe program such as Photoshop or Illustrator and really manipulate. I can make it larger, smaller, and also change the colors around. So I'm going to download an SVG and I'll show you how to do that. And I have two options in terms of downloading the file, royalty-free where I can pay and not have to give credit, 
or Creative Commons, which we're going to use here. And I really recommend this because all you have to do is attribute the creator and you can use it in your project for free. So when we are finished downloading, you'll see it'll give us the person who created it and also instructions for the attribution. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Illustrator and I'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger for us. Once more, you'll see that there's the attribution for the author and I'm gonna actually put this somewhere else within my project so I can just delete this right now. And the icon itself is selectable. If I click and drag, it can select all of the components and search or resize, maybe change the shape a little bit. And then by double clicking on one part of the icon, such as the country of Spain in the middle, I can customize just that region. So I'm gonna double click until Spain's selected. You can see the box around it. And just head up to my color tool. There's a border and I'll invert that. And now I'm starting to really customize the look of the icon. You can also click on the other parts and maybe really change the look and feel. Maybe I want Spain to be sort of popping out of the icon, for example. All right, well, there you have it. Three awesome free design resources for fonts, photos, and icons. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the comments, and also let me know what your favorite design resource is.